Right, hello there. Welcome to my Let's Learn the Track series on iRacing. This season, we're going to be covering the BMW 12.0 series, which is kindly sponsored by simrigs.com. So please check out their website in the video description. Now, videos will be published weekly to coincide with the track changeover. And the intention of this series is to help you gain back that lost time. So this isn't a place for hot laps. This is a slow, methodical approach to learn the track, showing you my breaking markers and my reference points. And as always, please let me know in the comments if this helps and you've managed to gain any time. Thanks for watching. Hello everybody, welcome to this week's Let's Learn the Track BMW 12.0 edition from Circuit Zolder. Uh, as you maybe heard in the intro, this series is sponsored by simrigs.com. You can see right in the top corner there. So please have a look in the video description at their website. Now, Zolder, a really, really tricky track, this one. It's really easy just to push a tiny bit too much and you can lose lots and lots of time. So the braking markers I'm going to show you with this video are quite conservative. So if you are confident, you can push them on a few meters, but just be very, very careful that it only takes you're missing your braking marker by one or two meters and you're running wide and you've lost loads of time. So if you're not familiar with Let's Learn the Track, I'll tell you what it's about. Well, this is my guide to the circuits that I racing for the 12.0 series. I'm going to do a couple of slow laps. I'm going to show you what I use as reference points uh, as we go around the circuit and what my braking markers are. And as I mentioned, they are quite conservative. Then we'll slowly pick up the pace and try and show you those braking markers and reference points in action on a couple of flying laps. Uh, so I'm using iRacing Default Weather and Dynamic Sky. I'll put the weather on screen now, and I'm using iRacing's baseline setup. So what you face come race week is what we've got right here, right now. So anyway, enough waffling on, let's get on the track. So here we are then, on pit lane at Zolder. The first thing we're going to do is find our brake bias. Um, by default, I think it's 56.1, so we're just going to adjust that, or I am at least anyway, to 52.4. That seems to work best for me around Zolder. Now, pit exit at Zolder, as with a lot of other tracks, is a bit of a nightmare. Uh, it's fine until you get to the end of pit road, and then you will find <laughs> that you're right bang on the racing line. So if you are here, if you are exiting the pits, if you've been in the pits um, in the BMW 12.0 series, you've either had a penalty or you've had damage and you've gone in for your fast repair. So make sure that your relative box is on there. That's F3 by default because here, uh, where we exit the pits, is pretty much turning point and apex for turn number two. So just bear that in mind. So F3, relative box, very, very important. So we'll talk about this next section as we go around next time. But essentially, we're just winding the throttle on here at this point, all the way around. Um, so here, this is the first place we're going to talk about here. So we're going to be in fourth gear at this point. And just, I'll use my mouse cursor. So here, you'll see a small uh, pathway leading off to the left-hand side there. And then there's a piece of grass... And then there's another pathway. Round about where this pathway is, this piece of grass, that's where we're going to be braking. And I like to downshift into third gear. I just think it helps the car rotate in the first part of the corner. So we're going to be downshifting into third gear. And then we're going to be trail braking to the apex. And when you see these rumble strips on the right-hand side there, we want to be getting on the gas just before those, if we possibly can, in third gear. And then a short shift to fourth. If it just starts a wheel spin, but get on the gas as early as you possibly can at the apex. The car will get loose and then let the car run out wide. You can take a little bit of the gravel there, but not too much. So the run up to um, a really, really tricky section. This is really easy to get greedy here and try and jump some curbs, Dukes of Hazard style. Well, it, I don't think that's the best approach here. I think over the course of a race, I think if you're consistent through here consistently safe 
then I think there's a good chance that somebody's going to cause some damage to their car or spin off here because it's really, really easy. Now, what I use here is this 100 board. That's what I use as my braking marker just after there, actually. But if you think about the 100 board as your braking marker, and if you are confident and happy, you can brake just after that. So we're going to be braking in a straight line all the way down into second gear. And there's some horrible rumble strips, and these curbs are quite aggressive here. So try not to clip the blue rumble strips if you can help it. So clip that one with your left wheel, clip that one with your right wheel. And then a top tip here, if you aim for, if you see this sign here, this OPSUR, that will put you on a decent line for this next left-hander because it's blind. So if you just head for that, don't focus on that too much because the track comes at you quite quick here. So if you just put your car in that position, then you're on a decent line for this left-hander. So we're going to be holding fourth gear all the way around here. Now, braking marker. Here, you want the car really straight before you start braking here. And as you can see there, the, the white line goes to a darker line there. So we're braking just before that darker line. As soon as you get the car pretty much straight here, it's probably before that dark a bit, actually. So just before the dark bit, we're going to be braking in a straight line down into first gear. Now, it's really easy on the right-hand side of this little chicane to get an off-track, so just bear that in mind. So then we're going to clip this inside kerb. Again, don't touch the rumble strips. Stay in first gear. And then a short shift to second. Just feather the throttle round here. Be very, very gentle. The car will get loose round here. Then up into third. Again, on here, the car will re get really loose, so be very careful of that. Then up into fourth gear for the run down to the hairpin. Now, braking marker, again, it's the 100, so just before the 100 or thereabouts, we're going to be braking in a straight line all the way down into first gear. So, braking hard all the way down, trail braking if you can, all the way to the apex, cut a bit of that inside kerb, and then accelerate up, straight line these, down to the last chicane. Now, this one, I find probably the most tricky corner on the circuit. Um, I always seem to get a little bit too greedy into here and you're much better sacrificing a little bit of speed on entry to gain it on exit over the start finish line so brake marker again 100 board just after actually we're going to be braking and a straight line all the way down into first gear apex in this one quite late because you want to open up this right hand turn so you want to apex late keep the car over to the right hand side now you can get away we're cutting these ones on the inside a little bit more than you can on entry. But, um, yeah, exit's far more important there than entry. Now, we'll run up to turn one. Now, you can see the boards on the right-hand side. So, we've got these Coke Zero boards on the right. And you can see just there where my mouse, where my mouse cursor is, the road surface goes a bit darker with where it's rubbered in. So, we're breaking probably... Three, three zeros from the end there. So, one, two, three. So, three of those from the end of this sign. So, we're going to be breaking in a straight line down into third gear. And we're going to be apexing this one quite late and then taking a chunk off this inside kerb. And then being very careful on exit. The car will run wide. And if you do end up on this section, just ease off the gas a little bit because if you don't, the car will spin there. And then here... Accelerating up, and you can either leave it in first or sec uh, sorry, second or third gear here. It's up to you. Uh, but braking markers, there's the shadow there, but that will probably change. So we need to think about what else we can use. The shadow there on the on the just there, that's kind of what I like to use if the shadow is there. But there's also this box on the left hand side, and there's that red marker on the end of the fence there. So as long as you can keep those in your peripheral vision. Just as they go out of it, then you can start braking for this turn here. So all the way to the apex, and then accelerate out, let the car drift right out wide, cut it back for this second apex, and then we're back to this turn again. So we're braking down to third gear there. As soon as we get to the apex, just before those the raised curbs on the inside, we're going to be accelerating down to this Dukes of Hazard chicane, braking at the 100 down to second gear so you can clip this first one clip the second one but it's very easy to uh, 
to jump there so aim for that mark on the sign there so fourth gear hold this all the way around as soon as the car's straight down to first gear don't cut that one too much because you will get off track short shift to second just feed the power in now feed the power in it will get loose there if you are full full on the gas so we're breaking here at the 100 down into first gear tyres are still really cold and straight line this little section and breaking at the 100 again trying not to get greedy just leave it in fourth gear so we'll apex this one late because we want the car over to the right because we want to op uh, over to open up the right hand turn to get, to get a good run over the start finish line Right, we'll try and slowly pick up this one a little bit. So three zeros from the end, down into third. Cut that inside curb. Car will run wide. But if it does there, just nice and gentle on the throttle. As soon as you get to the apex there, you want to be on the gas. You can go over those rumbling strips there on the outside. Doesn't really matter too much in this car. So looking for that pathway. So we're breaking there down to third gear. Just before the apex, we're going to be on the gas. So going up to the uh, Dukes of Hazard chicken, breaking at the 100, trying not to get greedy, so clip that kerb, clip that one, aim for the middle of the sign, fourth gear, hold it flat out all the way around until you get the car straight, then breaking hard down into first gear. Don't cut these, a short shift to second, feather the throttle all the way around here, accelerate all the way. Car's getting loose. Then we're going to be braking at or just before the 100. Trail braking all the way to the apex. And accelerating out. So this won't be a particularly fast lap. I think I've done like mid 28 in practice. Uh, race pace will probably be 27s. For the fast guys, I would guess, maybe even 26s. So three corks from the end. There we go, so we're breaking there, down to third gear. Cut this inside curb. Accelerate out. Breaking up the shadow. Leave it in third if you wish, it doesn't really matter. Accelerate all the way out, hit the second apex. Up in the fourth gear, looking for that pathway. There it is, breaking just before the apex, get on the gas. And we're breaking just after the 100 board here. So down into second gear. Clip this first apex. Clip that one. If you get away with it, if you just do it that much. Any more than that, then you will damage your car. So just feed the power in nice and gently around here. Breaking at the 100. Be very gentle with the throttle on exit of the hairpin there, because the car will get loose. So breaking at the 100. So there we go. So that is Zolder. So what kind of lap time have we done there? A 28 a 399 a 27 is definitely doable if we pushed on a little bit there but hopefully that helps you a little bit let me know in the comments if you wouldn't mind if it does help that's always greatly appreciated so there we go that's circuit zolder one of the trickiest circuits on iRacing to get right every lap there's so many places where you can make a tiny mistake and your lap times can drop off massively. There's still lots of time left on the track here with this guide. So please, if you feel comfortable, push on a few meters. Let me know in the comments how you get on this week. Hopefully, it'll be quite a good week. No doubt it'll be carnage as usual. But if you're getting a decent split, the racing round Zolder is always very good indeed. So anyway, have a good week. Good luck, everybody. See you later. Cheers.